You're listening to Experience Imagination, a themed entertainment design podcast presented by Falcons Creative Group. Every episode, we discuss a new topic with a panel of creative professionals. Hi, I'm Cecil McPurry, President and Chief Creative Officer of Falcons. Hey everybody, welcome back to another special event episode of Experience Imagination. I am joined in the recording room by two folks from in and around our studio. I'll get them to introduce ourselves, starting with Jesse. Hi, I'm Jesse James Allen. I'm the editorial director here at Falcons Digital Media. And Audrey? Audrey DeLong. I am a new producer writer here at Falcons. We are here today to talk about a project Falcons contributed to called The Women Astronauts. It was a video created for a live musical performance by the L.A. Philharmonic at the Hollywood Bowl. The film we produced was featured in a bigger musical performance called America in Space. And we will go in-depth with the details of the live performance with the composer, Penka Konova, in just a moment. Let's talk about the actual video that was produced here at Falcons Digital Media. Are there any specific challenges that come with trying to create a video to a live performance of music? Because theoretically, the music follows the same time in a recording as it would in a live venue, right? So unless there's a major hiccup, it should be the same timing. But we've never done that kind of thing before at Falcons. So what what is that process like? From a production standpoint, um, when we had the song, it immediately set things in motion in my brain, I think, um, and, and all of us as we created that story, because it's just such a, an emotional, uplifting piece. Yeah. Um, but it does have these waves sort of of, like, the tempo with the beginning is a little bit slower, and you can kind of see in your mind how, you know, we're going to build up to the story. How that arc takes yeah, place. And yeah, and how, you know, it's kind of softer at the beginning, so you can have maybe a couple of um, narrative sound bites that come in as you're seeing this beautiful imagery or these women work in space. Um, And then it kind of hits like this moment of more excitement. And so you could see maybe a little bit faster images, maybe like uh, the collages get a little bit more interesting. Um, So you can kind of build the visuals as you're listening to the song and and knowing that it's going to be played live just makes it that more powerful, that much more powerful. I remember when we worked on Heroes and Legends, one of the most fascinating out of many fascinating components of working on that project was digging through archives, digging through the audio assets, those narrative sound bites. Did you, did you find anything that, that stood out to you? There was a lot. Yes. <laughs> we, we had a lot of footage. And luckily, because of that project for Heroes and Legends, we already had a, a good record of where that footage was. Um, so we were able to go back to that. Mm-hmm. Um, we found some new things. I mean, NASA has a great archive online. Uh, so we, we were able to use a lot of that imagery. But um, I think for me, just finding out how many women have worked on these missions. Yeah. Um, an incredible number, really. And now, um, at, to Pinka's point now, you know, she wants to be a driving force uh, for women um, and, and to be a, a role model. And there were so many role models at the beginning of the, of the Space oh, Administration yeah. and, and, and what NASA was doing. And now it's almost, you know, complete parity. It's uh, about 50-50. Um, really? So that was an interesting thing to me um, to find out, but just to, to find out how many women have taken part in these missions. And then, you know, ultimately there was like, you know, we focused on the first woman to do this, like the spacewalk, the first to command a mission. Yeah. Um, the first mission with like a couple different women on board. So uh, there were a lot of interesting facts and tidbits we found. Yeah. And I really, you know, as an editor, I have to give a shout out to both Audrey and Tyler Capoe, who did the bulk of that massive dive into the NASA archives the, yeah. to kind of find all the stories. Because at the surface, when we were kind of sizing up and Penko was like, hey, you know, I would like to build some kind of story to this. I would love to have some kind of narrative to this, um, you know you're talking about hundreds of hours of footage to sort through to find that story. Yeah, Yeah, I mean, that was a team effort. Um, I mean, Jesse took the the lead entirely, like 99% of the editing, but we also had Jason Ambler, who did a color pass on it, did an amazing job on the coloring. That can't be understated, because when you're talking about the footage that we are working with, we're talking about archival footage from the 80s. We're talking, you know, shuttle crew, right? So some of the clips that we had to work with, I mean, they're just... It's not the kind of quality that we see in just standard television today. And Jason was able to go in and just pull color out of uh, some of those shots. I couldn't believe he turned them around and they just look like, wow, that looks like it was, you know, shot recently, you know. (laughs) Wow. It's incredible. But kudos to Jesse, too, for figuring out how to take that footage 
and package it in such a way where you're not really focusing on one big photo or video at one time. So, you know, there's, there's ways to arrange uh, the video footage on screen and it's not up for so long and you're not focused on this one shot, you know, maybe there's five or six shots in there and then you have, you know, a little bit of motion graphics and titles to distract you a little bit. Well, I think we're about ready to jump into Jesse's conversation with Penka in just a moment. Real quick, though, let's take a brief listen to the music that the film was set to. Hey, this is Jesse James Allen. I'm here on uh, an L.A. street in the art district here with Penka Koneva. Welcome back to our podcast. And we are just two days out from your presentation of America in Space at the Hollywood Bowl just a couple nights ago. Tell us what this show was and kind of how it all got started. First of all, hi, Jesse. It's a great pleasure to be on your podcast. Um, so a couple of years ago, I, um, after I came to Florida for the opening of Heroes and Legends, I was astounded by how musical the whole theme park is. There is always music on the bus ride, actually while you're waiting in line to catch the bus and certainly all the exhibits. And I started thinking about an idea to put together a concert program that will be based around movies about astronauts. It was kind of nebulous at first. I thought maybe I can do it uh, at the Kennedy Space Center, but I, uh, for a real concert, you have to have a real orchestral concert space. So that idea just stayed for a couple of years and, uh, la- and the time was ticking. I mean, I, I knew this, this big anniversary, this big milestone was coming in 2019 when we celebrate the 50th anniversary since landing on the moon. About a year and a half ago, I finally sat down and put together the actual concert program, and the idea remained the same, the vision was the same. A concert of music from Hollywood films about astronauts. So it's not just like space concert, but specifically to honor the astronauts and uh, to celebrate their character, which is the character of heroes and their resilience. So it's a concert. I partnered up with Michael Alexander, the director of events at Caltech, and uh, Caltech manages the Jet Propulsion Laboratory, JPL, and the moment when I brought the idea, which at that time was just a five-page Word document, he just immediately said, this is fantastic, I want to do it. And um, then the idea traveled a little bit longer, sort of while, um, until finally Michael Alexander presented the idea to the leaders of LA Phil, and they accepted the idea and said, we're going to schedule this for our Hollywood Bowl season, and uh, they found this date, August 15th. It's a multimedia concert with projection of scenes from movies about astronauts with the live, with the live performance by L.A. Field playing the score. So, Penka, tell us a little bit about the film that accompanied your score at the Hollywood Bowl for the women astronauts. How did that come to be, and what was the vision for that? When we began crafting the concert program, um, I persuaded Los Angeles Philharmonic to include this film. And there's no doubt in my mind that Falcon's creative group was going to be the creator because um, Falcon created the Heroes and Legends at the Kennedy Space Center. And uh, this uh, studio had done um, years of research and development into the NASA archives. And um, so I reached out to Jesse James, my wonderful friend and colleagues to create um, a, a documentary, a short presentation that features some of them and uh, highlights their achievements. And that's how I approached Falcons um, when we talked about commissioning Falcons to create this video. What was really fascinating about this project is, as with a lot of the kind of space projects, you go into these projects and you think you kind of have a grasp of like how many people are involved or how many missions were involved and that kind of stuff. But one of the things from the Falcon side is or uh, that we learned even on the Kennedy Space Center project is when you start to really, you know, open up the archives and you start diving deeper of like, you know, who these people were, what they did, you know, how many of them there were. I, I will ask our audience now 
in your mind, how many female astronauts have there been in space in the NASA space program? Now, most of my friends would say something like somewhere between 5 and 15. We discovered together during this uh, presentation, which really was kind of the 50th anniversary of NASA landing on the moon, there have been 50 U.S. female astronauts. And I think that in itself was just kind of like a profound thing when we, when we arrived at that moment which also uh, was a huge moment in your performance. The closing shot to this performance is a animated mosaic of the 50 women astronauts that collectively come together to form this iconic woman icon looking out into the stars. Tell me about a little bit about the first time you saw that ending or that version of how this thing was going to conclude. That ending of the, the documentary was really like this incredible reveal and it was a stunning reveal and my emotional response to it was like I was weeping because just to understand that 50 women have been in space on missions um, and have just to think for a moment about the preparation that went behind that behind, behind that heroic achievement and uh, just to think of, of their courage and teamwork and training and devotion was just astounding and I one of the things that makes me really deeply happy and proud is we were able to create this video to inspire the young generation to inspire all the girls in the audience young women older women to kind of see these role models of pos you know positive female role models and to me the the biggest takeaway for me is this the audience how many people came and the fact that we had women astronauts as role models on the screen but i had a very emotional response to have so many women and the reason i have this emotional response is because as a girl growing up there were no role models who are women. I mean, this is one of the reasons I looked out of art and music and into science and technology because um, just looking for role models, that's a need every young person has, boy, girl, you, you look for, you look up, you want to look up to somebody that you see yourself in, in, that, in that image. So I'm, I'm proud, I'm, I'm deeply, profoundly happy and, and the Falcons film was just so emotional. I mean, I just cried every time and then the music has that solo violin which represents the spirit ascending you know that ever aspiring human spirit aspiring for progress for technology to advance the humanity and what these astronauts did they, they advanced progress for all humanity and um, the music celebrates that this this project essentially is kind of a almost a continuation of your initial project which was an album dedicated to women astronauts. You went from that, you worked with us on the Kennedy Space Center Heroes and Legends as part of that score. And this is almost like chapter three. Let's tell our guests a little bit about what happened in chapter three. What was that night like for you at the Hollywood Bowl and kind of what was the scale of that performance at the Hollywood Bowl? The biggest takeaway for me was how many people came. Hollywood Bowl was pretty much at capacity, which is 18,000 people. And uh, to see just this, to see this ocean of faces and people really digging the visuals, which are iconic visuals. These are the visuals of the moon landing. And uh, um, just to see that incredible joy and elation in the audience was a profound experience. And I'm truly grateful to have been able to create this concert uh, because I feel right now we need this hope and celebration of heroes and this concert did that it was celebrating the true American heroes and um, and again I, I, my idea was very specific to celebrate the astronauts and uh, so the concert consisted of movie excerpts such as um, Hidden Figures, Apollo 13, The Martian which was the only sci-fi movie not based on actual story uh, Gravity was also a um, sci-fi film, fa uh, fiction film, but we also had a documentary, the actual documentary um, of Apollo 11. Um, and then my idea was very specific to include women astronauts because it was very important for me to have diversity and inclusion. Um, it's year 2019 and this is so much part of the zeitgeist right now. And uh, since the very beginning, I was kind of very determined to be sure to include 
um, again, because in space race, which is a, this very high-tech, highly political field, there was always inclusion and diversity. And uh, I wanted to reflect that in the choice of repertoire, the choice of the program, and I'm extremely happy that we were able to accomplish that. I thought one of the greatest moments about that was that it was kind of, uh, this, this part of the program was nestled between the score for Hidden Figures and the moon landing sequence from First Man. And I think it really kind of like amped up the energy of the night. And the, uh, the other thing that I should tell our audience, uh, the greatest special effect uh, that uh, this team has put together is there was a full moon over the Hollywood Bowl that night. And I, I could just watch the families looking down at the screens and listening to the music and turning their face toward the moon and turning their face back toward the, the orchestra. I mean, it was just this like perfect night of just like the American spirit and just the spirit of humanity. Um, that must have just been an extraordinary thing. August 15th was the available date that the LA Phil could book. And uh, it was just one of these cosmic coincidences and a beautiful thing that it was also full moon. But again, just the impact on the families and having these role models on, on, on the screen was deep. And uh, I was, people were clapping when Sally Ride's uh, mosaic first came. People were just like clapping and just so enthusiastically embracing the visuals, which was a hugely rewarding thing for me. And uh, just to know that I've created or at least started the idea. And at this point, I'd like to acknowledge the tremendous work that LA Phil's leaders did. They had a very difficult job to secure all the licenses because the whole entire idea was based on licensed property. Okay. You know, excerpts from Hollywood movies, blockbusters with all sorts of limitations. So um, I would like to thank Richard Lonsdorf, the producer of this concert, who was a warrior ninja and just interfaced with the studios for three or four months just wrangling these licenses so we can have an entire concert based on licensed property which is the Hollywood movies about astronauts and these are blockbusters these are iconic movies you know like Apollo 13 or The Martian or Gravity and for people and families to come to this moment to this concert and see excerpts from these films kind of put together in the same flow and I mean you're watching two hours of iconic images of space and astronauts and it was just really cool so you know what was interesting was when this project first came to the attention of falcons and you said you know here's my ambition and here's my idea for this and it's going to be at the hollywood bowl i mean it, it's it is extraordinarily ambitious and i think you know if anybody else would have said it there would have been some skepticism, but you have had this incredible track record of not only being fearless, but being successful. And I just thought maybe you would like to share for composers that are up and coming that have dreams like this. How does one even pull that into reality? How do you bring that into reality? It's interesting, from my perspective, it was such an obvious thing. The moon anniversary was coming, and it's just this one moment in time, July 2019, anniversaries come and go. I saw an opportunity to do something special about this anniversary, the 50th anniversary. Um, in my life, I've been driven by idealism and um, these big sort of concepts. They come from a pure place. Um, I'm not afraid of challenges. I have to navigate challenges and sometimes things are difficult and then when you this is when you speak from a place of humility and sometimes in this particular case there were a lot of headaches because it's a concert based on licensed property like I'm doing this event with somebody else's property but um, ultimately it came from a pure place um, I must mention my father is a scientist he's a chemist and of course everybody back in the 60s or 50s they dreamed to be astronauts so uh, my father always bought these books about space and chemistry and physics and sci earth sciences but i think even more so i grew up in bulgaria which is a used to be a communist country and that that whole idea of space aviation rockets airplanes to me always symbolized freedom because these were the vehicles to you know to fly in space and i was always kind of drawn to that whole subject matter so i was a gigantic space geek since childhood but um, this anniversary is also meaningful to me because I'm now 52 years old and the moon anniversary is 50 years. And my dad always told me a kind of a profound sentence how for his generation going to the moon was like a fantasy stuff for, from kids books. 
And he always said, you know, for my generation, that was fantasy. For your generation, that became a reality with the Apollo 11 landing on the moon in 1969. And that, that kind of stuck with me. It's a profound thing to just think how in just one generation only, technology advanced and the human spirit kept pushing technology so that, um, you know, the Cold War and the space race and the constant competition between uh, the Russians, the Soviets and America kind of led to this accelerated technological progress that manifested itself in America landing on the moon. So there's this kind of family also story how my dad always said that how quickly humans landed on the moon. Well, Panga, you're an inspiration. And I know you definitely inspired some minds on the night there at the Hollywood Bowl. On behalf of Falcons, thank you for the opportunity to be involved with this. It was just a dream job. Thank you so much for playing along with my ideas and being open to ideas and, and thank you. I just want and thank you also for this honor to be on your podcast. All right. I'm going to switch off to Abhinav here for some closing thoughts, but uh, thank you for joining us. The technical story behind this project is really fascinating, but I wanted to talk for a moment about the more big picture nature behind this project, its, its meaningful quality, its inspirational quality. What are your thoughts on the impact this, uh, this video and this piece of music can have? Audrey? Well, I think uh, definitely from an inspirational standpoint, I was moved, first of all, um, when I got involved with the research for this, but, and, and again, being my first project at Falcons, has a special place in my heart. Yeah. Uh, I have a cousin who worked on the space program. He's a rocket scientist. Uh, I, I grew up in Florida. Uh, I saw many, many launches. I saw a launch live at the press site with my own eyes many moons ago, pun intended. So... <laughs> Uh, just for me, I mean, it had a special place in my heart, um, being the first project that I got to produce here. Um, but then just thinking about the impact um, and the emotion that is probably swelling in these people as they're seeing it live. Yeah. Um, to me, I mean, I, too bad I couldn't be there, but just through Jesse's eyes and the reaction uh, that he said everybody had, and just he did a very nice write-up afterwards to the team that worked on it. Um, that just moved me personally, but I'm just happy that I got to be a part of the project that could be inspiring to, to girls who want to go into STEM. Absolutely. Yeah, definitely. Jesse. As a, you know, as a father of a <laughs> very bright girl, uh, you know, it's an important message to get out right now. Yeah. Um, and I, I can definitely tell that. I mean, the Hollywood Bowl is very much a family event. And when you have all those people it's together true, and then, you know, they see that it was just, <laughs> especially, you know, really there was so much of that event that was tailored to you know the men in space to have something that was so strong that was <laughs> I almost trumped that i mean when you started to see all the stats and everything of the, you know the accomplishments of these women astronauts i mean it was like overwhelming yeah and you could tell it resonated with the crowd because at the end they just went nuts <laughs> that's awesome yeah well, that does it for another special event episode. We want to thank Penka Konova so much for uh, inviting us to do this project and also speaking to us for this podcast. And also I want to thank uh, you, Jesse, and you, Audrey, for joining me to talk about it. Thanks for having us on. Thank you. Uh, you can send us an email at podcast at falconscreativegroup.com. Again, that's podcast at falconscreativegroup.com. Other than that, we'll see you next time. This has been Experience Imagination. For more information about this episode's discussion, be sure to visit our blog at falconscreativegroup.com. And don't forget to follow Falcons Creative Group on LinkedIn, Facebook, and Instagram.